Christine, I too was sexually assaulted, not 36 years ago, but about 50 years ago. The molester was our trusted family doctor. He was the very doctor who delivered me on August 20th, 1946. I'm 72 now. It was the 60s. I was in college. The sexual revolution was in full swing. The exact date and year are fuzzy, but details of the event are vivid, seared in my memory. Am I sure who did it? Oh, yes, 100%. I was a cool college co-ed, but not that cool. I was still a virgin in the 60s. I did advance to that so-called heavy petting stage, short of intercourse. I assumed that would come next. I went to my family doctor for birth control pills or IUD or a diaphragm. His office was in his home, a classic Georgetown 19th century house, creaky wooden floors with worn velvet furniture. His office was to the left of the front door through double doors. It was a large divided room, divided by a curtain he could draw. He drew the curtain, asking me to remove my clothes below the waist. Here I was in my 20s. I had never, ever had a gynecological examination. I had never even seen exam stirrups before. It was really odd to spread my legs and dig my heels into those cold iron stirrups. While I stared at the ceiling, his right index fingers massaged my clitoris. With his right middle finger inserted in my vagina, he moved both fingers rhythmically. He coached me verbally in a soft voice. Just breathe. <sighs> mimicking the sound of soft breathing. You're doing fine, he assured me. Suddenly, to my shock, I had an orgasm for the first time in my life. My body jerked several times. Then he leaned over, kissed me, a peck on my lips, and slipped behind the curtain to his office area. I don't remember saying anything. I couldn't even look at him. I quickly got dressed and drove home. At the time, I think I had... I may have told one of my sisters. I I certainly didn't tell my parents. Good heavens, no. I was actually embarrassed about my sexual naivete. All I wanted to do was just bury this incident in my mind and protect my family. You have to understand, my mother couldn't read or write English, let alone drive. So from then on, I told her, our family doctor lives too far. We're not going to see him anymore. Years later, I told my husband, when did I tell him? What year? What date? I don't remember. You know, I think the doctor died almost 30 years ago in his 80s. But because I knew I was writing this piece, I found the house on Google Maps. And seeing it again, it was just like I was standing across the street. I freaked out. I just freaked out. Christine, I too am terrified as I reveal this publicly. I can't sleep. I can't eat. Can you? If you can't, I understand. I'm really... I'm really scared. I'm, I'm frightened. I can't even cry. Will my legacy as a television journalist for 30 plus years be relegated to just a footnote? Will she too be etched on my tombstone instead? I don't want to tell the truth. I must tell the truth. As a reporter, the truth has ruled my life, my thinking. I'm writing to you, Christine, because I know that exact dates, exact years, are insignificant. We remember exactly what happened to us and who did it to us. We remember the truth forever. Bravo, Christine, for telling the truth.